Hi everyone, welcome back to the Pass of the Pros podcast. Uh, for those just tuning in, this is a podcast series where I sit down with some of the most talented and successful execs in sports and entertainment, learning about their journey so far, the path to success in sports business, as well as career-related industry topics as well. Today, I'm sat with Kareem Fatih, a successful marketing exec in the industry. Uh, he's worked team side, he's worked agency side, and is now leading marketing in North America for Hublo. Kareem, welcome to the podcast and thanks for joining. Thank you for having me. Of course, Kareem, a uh, good place. I really like to start these things off. Um, talk to us about, I guess, that journey for you, how you initially got into the industry. Take us way back to Kareem's first taste of sports business and, and what that looked like then. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I've always been passionate about sports, uh, particularly soccer since I was a kid. Growing up in Egypt, uh, soccer is more than just a game. It's a cultural phenomenon. People are crazy about it. And this uh, passion led me to pursue opportunities, different ones within the industry. My journey first began with my local team, Zamag Sporting Club, um, where I wore various hats within the marketing department. And then I launched their social media channels, which was the first of its kind back in uh, 2011 uh, across the Middle East and uh, Africa. And this was a time when digital media was just starting to take off in the region. The experience was very eye-opening and transformative. Kind of felt like a merge of my love for sports with marketing and it opened doors to doing a lot of different uh, opportunities across international sports uh, properties. I volunteered uh, in the 2012 under 20 FIFA World Cup in Turkey. Uh, did a diploma in sports uh, management with FIFA as well through CIES, their educational arm. And uh, that led me to further uh, pursue educational uh, opportunities in the U.S. at Ohio University, where I pursued my MBA in sports marketing. And those foundational experiences kind of ignited a deep interest in sports marketing and set me on the path uh, to work with uh, some of the biggest names in the industry during my time at Sport5. Nice, nice. And... Just talk to us about, I guess, growing up in Egypt. Um, I know one Egyptian king, by the way, who made it big time in the in the Premier League for oh, my, lo- <laughs> my loyal my loyal Liverpool football club. Um, but you know, it's rare, and being honest with you, Kareem, it's rare that you see a lot of people coming out of Egypt on the sports business side. You're probably one of maybe two or three people that I know in the industry. Um, talk to us about, you know, I guess any kind of challenges that you came across, because I think it's one thing knowing that you love sports or you love soccer in your case and you know you want to make it somehow involved in in the world of soccer I think it's another thing actually taking the necessary steps to be able to go out and do it and overcoming some of the the hurdles that you know people not just in your shoes but in, in similar shoes uh whether it's in Egypt um or anywhere else uh typically tend to face yeah I think I think the biggest aspect is trying to network and and uh, get as many opportunities as possible, whether it's internships or volunteering and getting exposed to different experiences. And uh, that is, uh, has opened a lot of doors for me. And uh, one thing definitely leads to the other, the sports industry is uh, as big as it is, it's very, still very small. And the uh, first or second degree of, uh, of connection has always uh, been there. And having the opportunity to transition across different continents uh, has made me more adaptable, open to continuous learning, but also build a strong network. Uh, I've uh, obviously born and raised in Egypt, but I've worked in Paris and I've worked in the US and each region has its unique market dynamics and uh, consumer behavior, uh, different cultures as well. So being able to immerse in that and uh, learning how, for instance, in Europe, uh, particularly in Paris, where I was with Sport5, it taught me a lot about the intricacies of European culture and how sports marketing is uh, evolving there. Moving to the U.S. has a different set of challenges and opportunities. The landscape is definitely more developed, diverse, and commercially driven. Yeah. So those experiences just uh, continue to equip you with a global perspective in the world of sports and uh, make you just uh, more versatile as an individual. And you've done a few um, a few gigs out in the U.S. before you got the Paris gig, right? So you. From knowing you personally, you obviously worked at the U.S. Soccer Federation, D.C. United, the Columbus Crew. How did those kind of opportunities come about for you? Yeah, for sure. During my time at Ohio, uh, one of the kind of core competences of the of the program is the alumni network. So being able to tap into that, uh, complementing with my studies has been uh, key in order to just get as many hands-on experiences as possible. As you've said, I've done event marketing for U.S. Soccer Federation. Um partnership marketing for DC United, free marketing for Columbus Crew, 
um, as well as like different consulting projects and case studies. Uh, my graduation or capstone project was with MLS. So tapping on those opportunities, putting yourself out there and uh, not afraid to kind of learn what you like and dislike. And I think it kind of hones uh, your interest specifically in the sports uh, marketing field uh, uh, specifically. Nice. And so Sport5 come knocking, obviously they've got an opportunity um, business with a huge focus on, on soccer. I know they've adapted and they've kind of grown in a bunch of different areas over the years, but at that time, at least, you know, soccer was, was the kind of main focus for them, right? Um, so that must have been, I guess, a big opportunity for you to step into, you know, it's one thing doing it in an internship environment. It's one thing um, doing it in a contracting environment. It's another thing getting a full-time gig in, you know, Paris, uh, a big city for, for for soccer as well. And and with one of, uh, you know, uh, the most highly regarded sports agencies in Europe as well. Um, how was that kind of opportunity for you? And, and just kind of talk us through your first, well, I guess what, you have five, seven years, six years, maybe? Seven years, sort of. Seven years, yes. Yeah, talk yeah, us no, through that kind of experience there. Yeah. It was definitely um, eye-opening in a lot of uh, uh, senses. So I first, as I mentioned, started back then it was Lagarde Sports in their yeah. Paris headquarters, uh, focusing mainly on uh, the Confederation of African Football uh, and the club and national team competitions and doing all things digital marketing for the Confederation as well as the different uh, brand partners they've had uh, back then, Total, Visa, Orange, and, and many more. So being able to dive uh, uh, deep into that and uh, also Africa is very diverse in terms of um, uh, the sports landscape uh, was definitely eye-opening and seeing how you can evolve and experiment in a lot of different ways uh, in a, in a non-traditional continent uh, was very rewarding. And that then led me to the opportunity to move to New York to... Uh, more or less uh, help kickstart the the agency's digital business in North America. And we started initially in the in the soccer space with uh, Bruce Dorman, which was our first client, doing all things from content, creative, internationalization, and brand building in, in North America, which was quite successful and led to us winning more business across across the soccer space. We had Atletico Madrid, uh, Flamengo, uh, FC Augsburg and CONCACAF and done some different projects with clients like the Bundesliga, which then led the agency to launch a, a global division focused on mainly helping sports properties grow, engage and monetize their fan bases uh, worldwide. And we expanded into other sports across the NFL, NBA, tennis, uh, golf and rugby, uh, working with clients like the Jets, the Lakers, uh, Raptors, Mavericks, Celtics, uh, US Open and like various uh, PGA tournaments. Um, so yeah, it was definitely, definitely a journey. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. You've mentioned, you just reeled off, and this is just off the bat as well, um, what, seven, eight, nine, ten high-profile sports teams. There must have been that sort of pinch-me moment at some point where, you know, this kid growing up in Egypt, loved soccer, wanted to, to make it gone out and actually made it happen for themselves and you know now you're involved in and working with and partnering with all of these businesses was there ever that kind of first moment where you just had to kind of take a bit of a step back and look around and think holy shit like this is this is good <laughs> yeah definitely I think it happened early on when I was at Sport 5 in Paris actually uh, during the 2017 Africa Cup of Nations it was in Gabon and uh, we spent like over like a month there uh, pre-tournament and during and post uh, but it was during the the final. It was kind of an incredible opportunity. We had multiple brand activations, and I was pitch side, so just kind of seeing the the stadium in full. And I remember using to uh, uh, I used to watch this competition growing up, yeah. the Egyptian national team playing in it. Uh, Egypt won like uh, three times in a row when I was uh, a kid. So it's definitely nice. kind of a memorable uh, competition. And yeah, the atmosphere is electric. Uh, being there, being able to see like the players and. Egypt was in the final, we lost. Uh, <laughs> but being this close to the action and like witnessing all the behind the scenes operations and executing at a major event was surreal. And it was truly a moment that reinforced my passion in, in working uh, in the sports industry. That's great. It's always good to hear those stories. I think it's it's quite easy, especially the longer you're in the industry to kind of take it for granted a little. Um, it's just a good moment of reflection for people sometimes just hearing it through someone else's voice. Uh, to kind of step back and, and you know, 
have a think about what they've achieved and and how they've got to where they've got to and um some of the kind of accolades and achievements along the way are always uh are always memorable uh from the sound of it so seven years at sport five um you'd done the team side you worked at the crew for a while you you done dc united um obviously through sport five i can imagine you would have picked up a lot of relationships with both brands and uh and rights holders as well um how did the hublo opportunity kind of come about was that something that i guess for you from a personal standpoint was this something that you always had the ambition of wanted to go and work brand side and kind of you know complete that um overview and marketing overview i should say um from each perspective of sat in each of those seats if that makes sense yeah definitely i think it's it's a mix of intentional planning and just seizing opportunities during my time at sport five uh majority of my work was uh for sports properties and obviously having sports uh property experience prior but now being that a luxury brand has provided kind of like a 360 degree view of uh, the entire industry um uh, in sports you've got like either it's property agency uh or brand or media or like a broadcaster or such yeah and i think each role has its unique set of challenges and learning experiences they kind of like enrich your understanding of how the how each stakeholder connects with one another and uh, my journey was first started in like digital media and fan engagement was the foundation but my transition was to sport five was more about like broadening my scope working with the high profile clients developing like innovative multi-platform campaigns Ublu kind of felt like a natural progression where I can apply my sports marketing knowledge and expertise to a luxury brand that's quite active in the in the sports uh, uh, industry, yeah. Um, and this experience in general has kind of allowed me to understand the nuances from different perspective and becoming just a more well-rounded uh, marketer. How, how would you say that marketing differs between kind of representing a sports team directly, a brand, or a team at a sports agency, or a brand at a sports agency? um you know to now obviously work in for a luxury brand like uh like Hublot um are there kind of different perspectives and different ways of of how marketing needs to be done or is it the same foundation just kind of executed in slightly different ways does that make sense yeah I think the foundation is the same there's definitely a lot of overlap when you're on the team side it's more about direct fan engagement uh yeah. building loyalty and affinity understanding the real pulse of the fans and creating those memorable experiences from the agency side, you get exposed to kind of running a business and the importance of scalability, creative ideation, multitasking, and being in, an, in a more fast-paced environment. Um, on the brand side, I think it's kind of learning how you can merge luxury branding with sports marketing, focusing on the exclusivity, the storytelling, and creating those like premium high-end experiences. Um, but in some sense, they're all connected. But I think the the way of execution obviously differs uh, based on the objectives and how you're trying to reach the end fan or consumer. Yeah. Would you say that there are maybe different areas that require more of a focus in each different environment? So, for example, um, creativity and innovation, for example, right now is a huge driver in 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 the world of sports, right? Um, we're seeing it everywhere, not just through content, through through all uh, marketing um, uh, initiatives. Is that something that maybe, as one example, is that something that maybe you sh you saw a little more during your time working for teams, and maybe in the agency world, and a little less so in in at the likes of Hublot, who you know the brand speaks for itself. Everyone knows that they're an innovative organization, and it's more about tapping into these different areas. You said yourself earlier that. The brand is really doing a lot from a sports perspective and, and obviously uh, with celebrities from a marketing standpoint. Um, but have you found that those kind of um, differences from uh, a focus perspective when it comes to marketing has differed or have they, you know, largely been the same in each organization? Again, I think it's still more or less the same. Uh, when you're targeting sports fans, you're tapping into the passion, the loyalty, um, and leveraging kind of the the community around around the team and the brand of the team, uh, creating a sense of belonging and excitement, um, and using different like whether it's culture, sports, or entertainment touch points to keep those fans engaged. On the brand side, the strategy is similar, but it's it's differs because the clientele or the audience that we're going after is not exactly the same. So. 
it's more about the refinement of that strategy to create the exclusivity, the aspiration of storytelling, and how can you utilize different marketing uh, pillars, whether it's sports, art, music, uh, fashion, lifestyle, and leisure, uh, to highlight our unique position across those worlds and uh, finding just the right balance uh, between creating excitement, but also highlighting the brand values and what the brand stands for to ensure the message resonates quite well with uh, whether it's your current audience or the audience uh, that you're trying to go after. Can you imagine you probably worked on a lot of um, exciting, fun campaigns, uh, fun initiatives, uh, let alone the businesses that you mentioned earlier, but again, just knowing you personally, I know that there's been uh, a lot of exciting uh, initiatives that you've been working on. What would you say has maybe been your proudest, your um, biggest accomplishment, biggest achievement, however you want to phrase it, the one that you look back on and you think, yeah, that one was a good time. I'm I'm proud of that one. I haven't achieved it yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> no, one one that I was memorable from last year, it was uh, the work we've done for Borussia Dortmund. It was kind of a game day theme uh, for... Um, a Champions League uh, match that they had against Chelsea. Uh, I think it was the quarterfinal of the Champions League. Yeah. And the campaign was the perfect example of like blending uh, popular culture into sports uh, to engage fans. We themed the entire match day around uh, How I Met Your Mother, the the TV show. Okay. Incorporating like elements from the series into the the content that we're doing. And the content featured like references and visuals from the show which really resonated both with the fans of the club, but also beyond that, outside of the sports world. Uh, and we also got a shout out from uh, the writer of the, of the show, which oh, was wow. for me also kind of special because I grew, I grew up watching that TV show. And it kind of added an extra layer of excitement and validation to the efforts. And I think one thing we did a lot for our clients at Sport 5 is how we really integrated not just the sports aspect, but how the different teams can tap into audiences through um, pop culture. Uh, honestly, I never would have put Borussia Dortmund and How I Met Your Mother in, in some sort of collaborative uh, content uh, play, but I guess that's why you're in the seat that you're sat in, mate. You, you you see things probably that most other people don't see, but it's pretty cool to hear that, man. Like the, the yellow wall, you know, you think about Dortmund, you think about the stadium, you think about the fans... Um, Germany is such a passionate fan base as well. So to link that to something like a TV series on the stage that is the European Champions League, arguably one of the most competitive um, European um, competitions, um, and to display something like that and then have the writer of the series actually give you a shout out and come back to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised that that's, that's one that, that, uh, that sticks with you. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think the, the unique aspect of what we try to do is like, Again, what happens on the pitch is going to happen regardless of anything. And I think as much as you can create kind of hype and buzz around, it's still going to exist. But how can you create that extra layer of excitement and generate further eyeballs across sports uh, that taps on things beyond just sports while still sticking to the essence of the beautiful game, whether it's soccer, NBA, NFL, and so forth. But audiences are now looking for more beyond just what's happening on the pitch or in the, in the arena so tapping into those different moments, I think, just manages to create the right amount of buzz uh, and interest uh, that cascades beyond just the traditional sports fan. You bring up a really good point. How how do you, I guess, in your experience, you've worked in many different environments. I'm sure this has been a big internal discussion at times. How do you find the balance between marketing to different audiences? I think depending on um, the environment that you're in or the business that you're representing, you've usually got a demographic of an audience, right? A specific target audience that you're, you're, you're reaching out to, that you're communicating with through marketing. How do you find the balance between, you know, targeting, I don't know, Gen Z, people that are up and comers, younger, uh, the younger generation, but whilst also keeping and maintaining um, a lot of that fan base, if you like, or customer base that's maybe... A very different generation therefore they consume uh, marketing in a very different way they consume content in a very different way there must be a plan a strategy behind that right yeah definitely i think it really goes uh, around like diversifying your approach as much as possible and having different touch points or pillars of how you're you're attracting those different profiles of audiences whether it's the traditional the diehard the casual uh, uh, those who are just interested about what's happening within uh, um, the day-to-day -day, like sports entertainment scene. So really finding ways across 
each audience bucket, but it even goes within the sport within the sports fan themselves, those who go to games physically, those who watch on TV or at home or uh, at a bar, or those who um, just consume highlights. And each yeah. one has a different way or preference of, of engaging with the uh, uh, sports content. Uh, and the goal is to really identify and using obviously data in terms of uh, uh, making sure that like the campaigns are data driven and uh, have our insight backed. Uh, to just make it not just imaginative, but also relevant and targeted for who you're going uh, uh, after. Yeah. Uh, big question that I always get asked from not just from marketers, but people that are hiring marketers more so. Um, how do we measure ROI in marketing, right? It's probably been one of the questions that a lot of people are asking themselves, business leaders are asking themselves. And I think when you're looking at it from a sense of advertising, from a sense of content, it's very difficult to measure someone seeing a Hublot ad campaign somewhere, reminding them that they need to get a luxury watch and then popping into the store the next day to buy one versus something that's very targeted, something that's very measurable. How, how have you over the years, and it may not be a necessarily a black and white answer, but how have you over the years tried to really focus on that ROI piece and through, I guess, the kind of strategy that you've implemented for the Martin initiatives that you've implemented, how have you always kind of brought it back to that Um where possible, of course, because uh, I think that's something that a lot of people would love to kind of hear from someone who's obviously in, in, in the seat that you're sat in. Yeah, I think I think it really, really starts with like defining set objectives and KPIs from the outset, like from the get go, knowing exactly what KPIs or objectives that you have for, for a marketing campaign, for example, and making sure that all your creative efforts and, and your approach is aligned with the overall business objectives and also can be measured um, Effectively, I think data is a big part of it by really understanding the the target audience who you're going after, understanding their preferences, likes, interests, and how you can really tailor that approach to match that of their uh, interest as a whole. Additionally, I think what's really important and sometimes neglected is post campaign uh, evaluation to really evaluate of those uh, performance metrics were uh, reached, whether it's engagement, uh, social reach, and also direct financial uh, impacts. I'm talking about sports, it's uh, merchandise sales, it's uh, ticket conversions, it's subscription to platforms. Uh, and by continuous learning from each campaign, you can kind of refine those strategies and strike the right balance between making sure it's creative and uh, it generates engagement, but also drives measurable uh, business outcomes. But it's it's a continuous learning process. I don't think there's kind of a perfect answer to it. Um, what we call it is like more of like trial and error, uh, and yeah. seeing what's what's effective, doubling down on it, seeing what's not really effective. If you can fine tune it or find a different approach. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's uh, like I say, it's it's one thing that comes up so often, uh, more often than you probably think. Um, when it comes to people that are hiring for marketers, um, they're assessing their skill set, they're assessing their experience. Uh, in some in, in some instances, we work with a lot of smaller businesses as well. Um, in some instances, there are organizations that they don't have a marketing department and they don't want to invest in a marketing department because they're saying, well, how are we going to know if that it's is not, returning yeah. investment for us, right? Why don't we just hire another sales guy or a sales girl and let them go out and, and win business for us, which is directly correlated to their efforts results in, in reward, right? Um, so it's just interesting to kind of hear the different perspectives from people that sat in your shoes, um, to, to, to kind of give that, uh, give that view. Um, one thing I'll add as well, like, I think marketing is also a long game, uh, because you're really developing the foundation that you're continuously building on through different anchors or levers. Uh, yes, you can sometimes have immediate like impact or quick wins, but I think the biggest thing about marketing is consistency is, uh, is showing up and showing up the right way but doing it on a longer term basis, uh, whether it's developing fandom or developing uh, loyal customers. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, do you have a preference, I guess? More of a kind of personal question and may maybe a little bit difficult for you to, to answer, so feel free to brush that one off. But um, the kind of perspective, the seat that you sat in, I speak to so many people that they love the team side and I'm, I'm passionate about being on the team side and I call them team guys or team girls. You've got people that just live and breathe the agency world. You've got people that once they get that exposure to brand side, I know I've known people that spent maybe two or three years team side in, in sports 
and then they've gone into a brand and they've spent 20 plus years at the same organization because they just love it there. Would you say there are kind of preferences maybe for you or I guess for people that are maybe considering in their careers, maybe a, a bit of a, an easier question for you to answer. Um, what should they be aware of when they think about the kind of different perspectives in each of those environments? And would you say that there are any skill sets that are maybe more tailored to each environment or would you say it really kind of varies depending on the individual, depending on the team, et cetera? I think it's an interesting question. I think it varies depending on the individual. One thing I'd say is, um, agency side, you get to wear so many hats and you get exposed to so many things and, uh, um, you're kind of in a, in a build environment and, uh, you're interacting with like teams, you're interacting with brands, you're interacting with, uh, media, you're interacting with talent, and it gets you exposed to different areas of the industry. Um, and then when you transition, whether to a sports team or a brand, a lot of the experience you gain on the agency agency side is uh, is transferable and applicable um and this is kind of what i also relate to is um my time in sport five was obviously diverse in terms of what we've done but it has enabled and opened the doors in terms of getting uh, uh opportunities to to work with like different uh, stakeholders in the industry that um can help you refine and tell you what you like and what you don't like but i think it kind of encapsulates the industry more or less from a 360 perspective yeah yeah um good stuff man well look kareem it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast uh for all those listening uh interested in connecting with kareem i'll, I'll tag him in the uh in the linkedin post here um he's a great guy uh an even better marketer actually responsible for for getting me uh or at least making me aware of an area in new york that i now reside in that I looked into and yeah, it's all down to this guy. So uh, yeah, uh, thanks again, mate. It's been a great having you on the podcast. Um, looking forward to continuing to watch your successes. Thank you, Samir. Appreciate it.